Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Joe Toppett. Many years ago, Doug Walker, aka the Nostalgia Critic, did a video called the Top 11 Best Disney Villains. If you haven't seen the video, click the link in the description box. Now, number 9 on the list was Scar. Doug explains that the reason why he put Scar so low on the list is because when you get right down to it, he's just a power-hungry dictator. He acknowledges that, yeah, there are other Disney villains who are power-hungry dictators. It's just that they are still interesting once they get their power. When Scar gets his power, according to Doug, he just becomes a whiny prima donna. In other words, Scar before he gets power is interesting. Scar after he gets power ceases to be interesting. I have a great deal of respect for Doug Walker. I've been following his videos pretty much since the beginning, and I still like to watch him whenever I get a chance. I found that over the years I don't always agree with his opinions. And in this case, I don't agree with him on Scar. So, I decided to make this video to show that Scar is interesting even after he gets his power. And I'm going to start right now. Everybody knows in the monarchy, the firstborn son is the first to inherit the throne. If you're the secondborn son, you're pretty much out of luck. And Scar has the misfortune of being the secondborn son. Mufasa is the king of Pride Rock, the ruler of all animals, or as far as the light touches, is his. And the birth of his son Simba is cause for a celebration for all animals, except for Scar. All it means to him is that there's another person ahead of him at the throne. In fact, he is so upset about the birth of Simba that he ducks out on the presentation. Zazu tells Scar that Mufasa is very furious about the fact that he had missed the presentation. Scar, on the other hand, isn't afraid of Mufasa and even tries to eat Zazu. And the only reason why he doesn't is because Mufasa tells him to drop him. You know, I always thought Scar's reaction to Mufasa was interesting. Mufasa is definitely the king of Pride Rock, but Scar just kind of is sarcastic about the whole thing. Yeah, he knows he missed a very important presentation, but he doesn't give a crap, nor does he even try to make up excuses. He just says, it must have slipped my mind. Later in the movie, Simba has a conversation with his father about being king. During the conversation, Mufasa instructs him that he should never go beyond their realm. And when Simba brings this up with Scar, Scar uses the opportunity to manipulate Simba to disobey his father. But being a master manipulator, he doesn't directly tell him to disobey Mufasa. In fact, Scar states that Mufasa is absolutely right. It's far too dangerous that only the bravest lions go there. And Simba, feeling that he's a brave lion, wants to know why can't he go. It's interesting that Scar wants him to go to the elephant graveyard, but he uses reverse psychology to get him to go. So, even if Mufasa had found out that Scar was the one who told Simba about the elephant graveyard, Scar could just easily say that, hey, I told him not to go, and he'd be telling the truth. That is what was so brilliant about his plan. Now, 
We all know, of course, that Simba disobeys his father and goes to the elephant graveyard where he confronts the hyenas. And the hyenas were under instructions to kill Simba. But Mufasa steps in and takes care of them. After the hyena's failure to kill Simba, Scar lays out his plan to kill Mufasa and Simba. And this is one of the best songs ever of Be Prepared where he has his hyenas behave like Nazis. Huh. Scar's plan is once again brilliant. He wants Simba to stay on the rock and the hyenas would cause a wildebeest to stampede. And while Mufasa tries to get away from the wildebeest, he begs Scar for help. But Scar uses this as an opportunity to kill his brother. And Scar makes Simba believe that he was responsible for the death of Mufasa. And what makes it so brilliant is that he doesn't really come out and say it. He offers comfort to S he offers comfort to Simba over the death of his father and even acknowledges that he didn't mean for it to happen, but that it was still his fault that Mufasa is dead, and he encourages him to run away. Now, once again, the hyenas were supposed to kill Simba once he runs away, but they failed to do so, and but they decided he was as good as dead because they didn't want to end up like Cactus Butt right here. And since Mufasa and Simba were no more, Scar gets the throne of Pride Rock. Okay, what I just described proves that Scar is an interesting villain in getting his power. But what Doug is saying is that this is where he ceases to be interesting. I do agree with him that he does act like a whiny prima donna once he gets his power. But that's what makes him so interesting. You see, when you get right down to it, Scar is a guy who wants power because he hates being underneath somebody. He feels like the firm belongs to him and him alone, and that fate had denied him what was rightfully his by making him the second born. He doesn't want to be king just because he has grand plans. He wants to be king because he wants the power. And to get the power, he needed followers. Since the Linuses were not going to follow Scar in any way, he recruits the Hyenas. At one point, he promises them that if they stick with him, they will never go hungry again. You see, Pride Rock went from this to this. I'll say he ran things to the ground, wouldn't you? In fact, the hyenas confront him about the fact that there was no food. It was dinner time, and they were still hungry. Scott doesn't care. He just says it's the lioness's job to hunt, and if they wanted something to eat, just eat Zazu. Scott is that politician who promises you the moon, but fails to deliver. And set your own political joke in the comment section. He used the hyenas to get his power, and they're very disillusioned by him. In fact, Banzai states that Fanes want this bad under Mufasa. But Scar does not like it when anybody brings up the name Mufasa. And the hyenas know it very well, so... He had to pretend like he said K-Pasa. It shows that even though they're disillusioned by Scar, 
they still need him because under Mufasa, they were nothing. And also, they were in it deep since they helped kill Mufasa. And they figured they needed to remain loyal to him. Like a lot of people who follow a politician, again, insert your own political joke in the comment section, feel the need to follow somebody they're disillusioned because they have nobody else. It's what makes Scar so interesting is that he just doesn't care. So Robbie even brings up that they needed to leave Pride Rock because there was no food and that everything has been run to the ground. But Scar states that they weren't going to go anywhere. And when Sarabi mentions that he had just sentenced them to death, Scar said, so be it. That he is the king, he can do whatever he wants. I think Doug misses the point in Scar is that he is interested because of how much he doesn't care. He loves having the power, but he doesn't want the responsibility that comes with the power. If things get run to the ground, so be it. He didn't care about anybody. In fact, he doesn't even care about his own followers. Because he tells Simba that the hyenas were the enemies the entire time. You see, he acts like a typical politician. He pretends to be your friend. But behind your back, he'll backstab you. The hyenas take offense to the comment that they were the enemy. And the moment Scar sees the hyenas again, he says, Oh, my friends. And that's when they went, Friends? I thought we were the enemy. Yeah, that's what I heard, Ed. And they eat him. Talk about a violent death. You see, throughout most of the movie, the hyenas were afraid of Scar. They did everything he told them to do, even after they were disillusioned by him. But here, they no longer feared him because he wasn't loyal to them in the end. And that's what led to his downfall, was disloyalty not only to his family, but to the hyenas who brought him the power to begin with. I get that Doug feels that once Scar gets his power, he no longer is interested, but to me, Scar is a commentary of that leader who will promise you anything and tells you everything you want to hear just to get power, and yet he never had any intention of delivering it to you. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Scar. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later.